a scenario revisited. As you would recall, we started the course with understanding this business scenario and then I've taken you through the entire procurement supplier management life cycle wherein we have onboarded the supplier, registered the supplier, then qualified and finally approved them. We then understood a procurement, services procurement and feature of contractor portal. So I thought it may be a good idea that we have a quick recap and quickly go through the business scenario and now I would like to start executing this business scenario. So as you would recall, we had the buying organization name as Vision Corporation and their requirement was an enterprise-wide centralization and automation of demand management, planning, order management, inventory management with customer invoicing and payment. So this is what they want to automate in their organization. That's where they are looking for consulting companies or in other words suppliers to supply their services to execute this project. So the total project budget is $3 million and the project duration is 12 months. And going a step further, there were a lot of uh, requirements in terms of project execution. Uh, they wanted to prepare and track the project plan, resource plan and project budget. They wanted to have three uh, full-time dedicated employees as part of the project, which were like the project owner, the project manager and technical solution architect. While they had full-time employees, they also wanted to employ, uh, they also wanted to call or invite four strategic suppliers for preliminary study and report. And out of these four strategic suppliers, they wanted to approve three suppliers. So this is what we have done it as a part of the supplier qualification life cycle, wherein we have taken one more supplier. So we made it five and we approved four out of those five. So now that we have got approved strategic supplier, now it's time to go ahead to complete rest of the contract life cycle. So to start with, they wanted to have one approved supplier uh, to award a consulting fixed price services contract for functional implementation services. So it will be like a fixed price contract for fixed amount, fixed duration, and the contracting company will provide contractors to execute this contract okay the second type of a contract they wanted to assign to another supplier for a time and material rate based services contract for providing technical and development consulting services that's where they wanted to actually employ independent contractors through an agency okay finally they wanted an ability to assign contractors to multiple projects so of course this is one project but while they are executing this project since vision corporation is a large organization they have multiple projects executing at the same time so they wanted an ability that these contractors that they employ as a part of executing project vanilla if any other project comes they should be able to assign them the other projects as well all right then the third type of contract they wanted to assign to a third supplier, which is what? Which was uh, a fixed price rate based contract for testers, for like independent contractors. Okay. So um, there is a subtle difference between this and this. This is a time and material contract. So it's an ongoing basis contract. And this is a fixed price contract for, uh, for a specific type of contractors which are nothing but like testers okay they also wanted to assign a fixed pride uh, services contract for miscellaneous expenses to supplier number two so dnm contract is for uh, is will be used for billing the uh, buying organization for providing services but while the contractors are on board they will also incur expenses reimbursable expenses what are those expenses it could be like hotel expenses traveling expenses taxi expenses laundry expenses and so on so they wanted to assign this uh, contract to supplier number two uh, who will execute the time and material contract as well 
okay finally all employees and contractors must be able to submit the time sheets and expenses online on the system so that it could be tracked who has submitted what at what time how much of expenses have been reimbursed how much of money has been billed and how much of money has been paid to the suppliers okay so that's in a nutshell the business scenario that we discuss now in terms of executing the business scenario we have completed these steps of bringing the suppliers on board and getting them approved now the next step is is we will go ahead and execute the first contract the fixed price consulting services contract it will have a budget of 1.5 million dollar and it's up to the contracting company or the suppliers to provide um, the number of uh, number of consultant to execute this contract okay but what I've done out here is as part of this contract I have break I have broken down this entire 1.5 million dollar to actual figures how we will go about executing that in the system so as you would see although fixed price contract this is something not disclosed to vision corporation which is the buying organization this is something that the supplier maintain at their level that how they have achieved the figure of 1.5 million dollar okay so I just wanted to show you the breakup of how supplier has achieved this figure so as you could see there would be three contractors supplied by the suppliers and um, those three uh, contractors are independent consultant will work 21 days a month and eight hours a day so that their rate will be 100 bucks 100 bucks uh, a an hour I, I should say this is not a day the rate is 100 bucks an hour this is like a typo okay and then when you multiply all these you will achieve this figure out there so that was their rate on an hourly basis then you come to per diem expenses on the per diem side they will expense eighty dollar per day as per diem expenses which will take care of you know expenses like laundry or meals or taxi expenses then they have also allocated a separate expense for pulling the taxi so while they're going to the office from their hotel uh, the, all the three consultants will pull it in a taxi and go together instead of hiring separate taxis just to save on expenses so that will cost them 80 bucks a day to and fro to the client side okay finally the airfare will cost $300 a trip so from wherever the consultants are coming from to the client side and they will be going to their home every three months so this 300 bucks a trip will cost three every three months okay so finally I've totaled it up so that has come to uh, this figure and there is a margin of approximately <clears throat> I should say 30 to 35 percent so that's been added to achieve this figure of uh, 1.5 million dollar okay so that's the breakup which is actually known to the supplier itself vision corporation doesn't know about it but as I said I simply wanted to share with you how that breakup has been achieved okay now in line with this 1.5 million dollar once it is uh, or once the contract is assigned to the supplier then these are the breakups in terms of executing that contracts okay so I'm not going to go at the moment this is uh, this is something that we will revisit it while we are executing the contract or purchase order in purchasing that's where I will come and ex explain you about the services contract details about all the components that I have written so anyway coming back to the business scenario we will now start with a consulting services contract we will uh, we will have the requester or vision corporation request this contract through I procurement and they will then we will take this whole business process cycle uh, in terms of sourcing the consulting services asking the suppliers to bid and finally awarding the suppliers and then executing this contract so this is a long cycle and it will take a couple of hours to finish off this whole demonstration in Oracle system
acquisition creation for fixed price consulting services contract so as you would see in the process flow for fixed price consulting services contract what i'm going to do it is i will first create the acquisition will get the acquisition approved and finally we'll run the complete sourcing cycle to negotiate the best price from the invited supplier and finally we'll award the contract to a supplier and create a purchase order and and, and then we'll get it signed with the supplier so that it will become a binding contract between the buying organization and the supplier and then the supplier will start executing the purchase order so in order to do that we need to go to oracle applications and create the requisition first so let me just go to oracle applications okay you have to log in as a user operations and enter the password welcome okay at this point of time i will go back to that process flow and i will explain you something that i'm although i'm using the user operations which is nothing but a super user has got access to all these responsibilities but in real life scenario what happens is a requisitioner or a requester who requests for services is uh, or will have a separate user login then an approver of the requ requisition will have a separate user login a sourcing buyer will have a separate user login supplier obviously is an external party will have a separate user login and then finally the purchasing buyer who deals in terms of the purchasing aspects with the supplier will have a separate user so there are multiple parties that are involved in the complete process flow but as far as this demonstration is concerned i will have one user for requisitioner one user for a person who will approve the requisition then we'll have a separate user for supplier but all the other aspect of this process flow we will simply use one user operations to complete okay that's just for demonstration and our convenience but as i said before in real life scenario you'll have separate user for each of these process areas that are mentioned all right so let's go back and now hit the login button scroll down and navigate to responsibility i procurement did you see that so hit on that i procurement and as soon as you hit on i procurement you will reach this form okay now in in our case um, we have to raise a non catalog request okay a non catalog request is something like which is not listed on this catalog okay a catalog is mostly made for goods which are frequently ordered okay now you can also define non catalog request and and place it in one of the stores through a functionality called as smart forms that we will look at that later but as of now we will simply go and raise a non catalog request for fixed price consulting contract here okay so click on non catalog request here <clears throat> now here so since it's a fixed price uh, contract for a specific amount then we need to choose an item type called as goods or services billed by amount all right now i'll quickly go back to the business scenario just to refresh your memory what i'm talking about so i'm basically talking about the consulting services fixed price contract it's got a budget of 1.5 million dollar so the budget is already set okay so that's the reason it's got a fixed price and it's based on an amount okay so that's what i will enter it in the item description i'll say that fixed price consulting services contract for project vanilla okay for let's say implementation services for project vanilla okay this could be a little better description choose a category so let's say a category consulting category there's a miscellaneous consulting all right amount is 1.5 million so all right the currency is usd which is fine now one thing that's 
you need to remember is click on this check checkbox RFQ required which <clears throat> what it will do it is it will indicate that an RFQ is required for this requisition uh, because there is no existing contract in place okay so the approver uh, of this requisition will also know about it even the sourcing folks will know about it that a new requisition has come for which an RFQ is required all right so optionally enter these details contract number if you had any or a preferred supplier name out here any contact phone number from the supplier so currently we don't have this information in place and uh, we are planning to invite a number of suppliers so I wouldn't want to give a preferred supplier at this point of time all right now once you're done with all this simply hit on the button add to cart right now as you could see it's added out here so 1.5 million dollar contract fixed price consulting services and remember the item type goods or services built by amount so once you're done click on view cart and check out now hit on the checkout button now again at this point of time you can provide more information to this requisition for instance if uh, you were uh, working on a project which has got so many contracts which indeed we are then if you want to track it at a project level then you can optionally give a project number here but this project number must be defined in Oracle project similarly these fields task expenditure type expenditure org and expenditure item date all these comes from a project level so that all these expenses that you see out here rolled over at the project level and can be tracked by the project manager at a project level so as far as this course is concerned integration to project is out of scope but we'll have a separate course wherein I will show you the integration with Oracle projects as well and that's where we will see all these contract the expenditures will roll up at the project level all right so for the moment we'll simply proceed ahead now I'll also show you another thing if you click on this edit line button you can provide further information uh, at the line level okay so what's those further information are you can uh, provide the billing for this again you can indicate the project information here the accounts accounts are something sometimes what happens is if you want to charge this requisitions to multiple departments or multiple uh, subsidiaries within an organization you can change that account to different parties so what happens is when this requisition gets converted to a contract and it gets fulfilled and when the time of payment comes that's where each of those individual departments will be charged for the amount that has to be paid to the supplier for providing these consulting services again in our case let's make it simple let's have only one but in real life scenario you will have multiple lines with multiple departments uh, being charged for the services that's uh, that are getting procured okay now the final one is attachments here you can attach um, optionally you know attachments like and that could be pointed to supplier or buyer so if you if it's pointed to supplier supplier would be able to see these um, attachments coming from requisition in uh, 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 whenever supplier logs in onto the system in Oracle applications and then uh, similarly you've got uh, attachments to buyer or to receiver and miscellaneous so there are various categories that are coming seeded with the product itself okay so once you are done with this simply hit on the apply button to return back to the main screen and click on next okay and this place you can see all the approvers that are defined in the hierarchies since this amount is 1.5 million dollar it exceeds the amount threshold which is given for approver, uh, approval to this user current user so it will now go to his boss for uh, the requisition to get approved okay so this is basically coming from purchasing hierarchies uh, which which determines who is the next approver and then you can set up the approval amounts as a part of Oracle purchasing setups okay so if you want to explore more about that then you should attend my course in Oracle purchasing wherein I will explain you the setups involved as far as the approval hierarchies and 
you know setting approval limits are concerned anyway in in this case let's move on further hit on the next button and as you could see all the details are summarized out here so the description that we have given <clears throat> and all if you hit on the show button it will show you all the details of that requisition so once you're done simply hit on the submit button so what will happen is this requisition is now submitted to Casey Brown for his approval so we'll note down this requisition number for our future references okay and in the next movie I'm gonna log in as Casey Brown and I will show you how the approval process is, is done requisition approval fixed price consulting contract so as a part of the requisition process we have so far created the requisition and approved or submitted it for approval so now it's waiting for Casey Brown to approve it so let's log out and log in as Casey Brown so Casey Brown user is C Brown and the password is welcome and as soon as you log in you will see the requisition lying at the notification workbench out here so click on that and uh, optionally if uh, as an approver if you want more information then you can simply hit request information and you can ask any questions that are required from the requester and again a notification will be sent to the requester asking for more information the requester will reply to that notification providing that information again this person will receive a new notification of the information and once the exchange of the process is over then he will go ahead and simply hit the approve button for okay so in our case let's take the shortcut of going and simply approving it so as you could see now the notification has gone from the open notification or open work list and it's now closed so let's log out now log in back again as operations and there you will see the operations user would have got a new notification okay so click on login and as you could see here rec purchase requisition 4311 has been approved so click on that to see the details if there were any comments from the approver it would have been shown here okay so in our case we'll simply hit on the ok button so this requisition will now go off from the open requisition work list now in the next movie we will go to the demand workbench and we'll understand more about the demand workbench and uh, what you call as requisition pooling and centralized uh, procurement and then once we understand that we'll move on further to understand the strategic sourcing process how sourcing is done for the requests coming through iProcurement